Welcome to another part in the Pan-European series. As you can see, I've hung the radiator on as promised. All the paint's dry now. And uh, I think it's time to put some water in it, which I have no expectation of staying in there. Um, and see if we can get it to start up an idle. And just check we've got water flow. Uh, try and push some of that horrible nonsense um, rad weld out. And just check the engine for health, really. So I'll get on with this. I'll bring you back in a moment. Right, won't waste any time since we spent most of the last video promising to do this. Bowls are full. There's no fuel leaking down the apron at the moment. Batteries plugged in, ignition's on. Uh, let's open the enrichners and see what happens. <laughs> go of those a little bit too soon. We've got coolant flow. Right, awesome. I'm just going to pop that radiator cap on. I really don't want to build any pressure because there are no hose clamps on it. But um, we'll run it until the uh, cooling system starts to warm up a little bit. And we'll see if we can get a couple of revs out of it with the camera as well. So bear with me.
Don't know if you can hear me or not, but I've momentarily hot-wired the fan with a power supply because I don't know how the um, ignition setup that we saw before, how that third wire is doing. And I've taken the wire off of the coolant temperature sensor and linked it into the ground. That just kicks the fan on. I'm just doing this to create a bit of temperature gradient across the radiator, hopefully make the coolant move across it. I'm not entirely sure how hot the bike is. The cylinder head's a cup of tea temperature. Um, there's a bit of smoke off the exhaust headers and everything because they haven't been run in ages. But um, so far, so good. We started running out of petrol in the carbs, which is why it started splurring and coughing back. Normally it's got a fuel pump pushing it in there. In this case, it's just a bottle, so I have to squeeze it. Um, when it was running well, it sounded fantastic. So no worries there. I think I'll bring you back um, after I've turned the fan off. Right, well, we've got this engine trying its hardest. Um, it's probably a good idea to check the alternator works. Now, I have managed to misplace all of my multimeters, which is quite a feat, given that I actually have quite a few of the things. So we're going to do something plenty dodgy now, and that is we've got the bench power supply, but if you look on its screen, it's in the um, not connected, so it's not outputting power. But if you set the voltage down, which I have to 10, and then clamp that onto the battery terminals it's going to show the battery voltage because this multimeter is half across the power supply inside half across these terminals on the outside so when we start the bike we should see if it's going to charge the battery at all but first i've got to balance over the top of this mains power supply and pour petrol into that open pipe bear with me right don't think it's going to need the enrichers, but I might need to give it a tiny bit of throttle to get it going. Not got a great connection on the battery there. Try again. Okay, looks like we've got a solid 13 to 14 volts, which is about right. The engine's not running very fast because I forgot to put the coolant cap on again. So I'm getting absolutely showered in rank coolant. Um, but that proves our point. We're charging, which is great. That means the alternator, at least some amount, works. Which is brilliant news for two reasons. One, they're a pain in the ass to change on these because they're right down here at the back of the engine, just in the bottom of the shot. And two, they're really expensive. Right, while we're competing in the dangerous bollocks Olympics, um, I figure we'll see if we've got a working gearbox as well. I have no back brake pads, which is what's going on there. Um, the bike is up. I've taken the rear wheel spin plate out of the motorbike lift. The bike is strapped down with an extra strap and it has a jack under the middle of it um, in order to lift it up just an extra little bit if i'd have thought about it i'd have put it on the center stand but because the front tire goes flat so easily it's a mission to get it on the center stand and get it locked into the wheel carrier at the front so i'm going to quickly start up i'm going to hold it at idle and i'm just going to click it through the gears make sure that things spin and there aren't any horrible noises i'll probably chicken out before i get to any particularly high gears so fair warning
Okay, there we go. We've got all our gears. There's no horrible noises, no clanging or banging. Won't go any further than that until we know that there's um, fluid in the rear, whatever it is, diff, drive, final drive, don't know. Don't know what you call that. The manual will tell me. Um, the other thing we got is a very angry ABS light, which started flashing because, well, I mean, of course it did. The back wheel's spinning, but the front isn't. So yeah, there you go. You have to trust me, that flashing's the ABS light. <laughs> okay, so we have a working drivetrain. All right, so I think we'll end this part in a different way because um, life got in the way and it's late now. Everything's back in the garage, so I can barely move. But um, I wanted to take a quick look at the fuel pump because a replacement arrived in the post. So this is actually a fuel pump kit for a Goldwing GL 1500, so it isn't right for the Pan-European. Although it kind of says it is, but it kind of says it isn't. This is the original fuel pump that sits in this carrier that hangs in the tank. Two pipes come off of it. One comes out of the pump, which is the module that you can see in there. And the other one goes to this open area here. It's straight through to here. And I'll show you some footage in a second of inside the tank. It follows a vent pipe all the way up to the, the crown here. I think the idea is um, to allow air into this section of the pump here because the pump actually draws fuel from that slot that you can see and so it draws fuel in here pumps it out of the small pipe that goes up the tube to the carbs so you're probably watching me futz with the fuel pump and um i couldn't leave it alone this piece that held the original pump i thought it must have something more to it and it does it's actually got an anti-return and an overpressure valve in it the fuel is pumped into this spigot, it comes through here, that's the anti-return, and then this flap you can see is an anti-overpressure. Anti it may also be a crude fuel pressure regulator, but a lot of people said that aftermarket pumps were pushing closer to 8 or 9 psi to the carb when it's meant to be 2. So I took this apart, as you can probably see, I dremeled a large amount of it off because this pump barrel did not fit inside of the original um, housing. And I've drilled out this spigot here with a 9mm drill bit to accept the top of this pump. And that is a really, really tight interference fit in there at the moment. It squeaks like heck when you push it in, so I don't want to pull it out just for the sake of this video. But suffice to say, with the pressure that an impeller pump like this is creating, that's not getting blown off of there anytime soon. We can now pop this end back on again and put it into the cradle and retain the benefit of the overpressure valve end of the anti-leak bag valve at least for the time being if this doesn't work we might need to investigate a pressure regulator or at the very least measure the pressure that's being pushed out of the tank just to make sure that this pump isn't a little hyperactive as i say a number of people have bought similar things on um, on the web have reported it being a bit hyperactive so i'll get this all assembled in the cage i'll see if there is any uh, additional bracing we can do to hold these two together but it is worth bearing in mind that everything that gets done in here has to be fuel safe and so wrapping a couple of zip ties around it's not going to fly because they'll just melt in the fuel over time and clog everything up so i'll go see what i can do with that now and then we should have a fully working fuel tank that is not rusty inside like the old one was and um, this one even came with a far nicer fuel cap the old one was quite corroded this one squeaky clean so we'll do putting that on the bike, um, potentially we'll rest it in there, we'll get the carbs built up um, and get the top of the air box on and we'll leave that until we can balance them but uh, potentially we'll test out the fuel pump with those carbs, get the bike running, check everything works properly. As I think I mentioned earlier I did manage to secure a new radiator so we've got that to sort out um, but before I put the fuel tank back in proper I want to see if I can rearrange the bike on the lift um, and we'll get that swing arm out and take a look at it because I do have freshly arrived the um, or a tool to undo the strange nut that's on one side of the swing arm bolts and uh, yeah we can use that to take the swing arm off and see if it's any good. So once we've got all that put together um, we can hopefully get the rest of the carbs back on. I'm going to rest this in place, maybe we can run the bike to make sure everything works properly. Um, but what I've also got arrived in the post is a tool to get the swing arm nut off. Um, and before we put this back in, it probably makes sense because of where the swing arm's positioned to get that out inspected 
um, and check all that out before we secure the tank back in. And then we've got, um, I think the next thing is going to be brakes and dealing with this really rusty lower um, yoke. We've got a new one over there, or one that can be tidied up. So I think that'll make it all for this part, because it's very late now. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers for watching. Okay, so here's our new fuel pump assembly. I'll talk you through it quickly. So obviously the wires need to be connected to the pump. I'm going to take that upstairs to my desk and um, use the proper crimps on it, put some ring terminals on, get them on the pump. We've got the original hose, which I've got some replacement coming for from that because it's quite crusty, coming off of where those valves are in the plastic body. That is as near to butt up against the housing there as it can be so that it can't walk away from this join that we made. This big tube which would normally go off um, up around to the top of the tank here. I'm still not entirely sure the point of it. Some people suggested it was a fuel return for the overpressure but the overpressure actually pops out where you can see that silver cross there. Um, and since we're missing the gauze and all the surroundings, this is now just a pipe to nowhere. I'll probably put that piece of pipe back on into the fuel tank just so that I've got it in case I need it in the future. But that's essentially redundant now. And then I've got the pump with its own vibration isolation um, coupled up with a piece of the original vibration isolation. And then there's the sock at the end here. We might have to use the sock that fits flat against the end of the pump. Um, but I have test fitted this into the tank without the sock on it um, and barring a bit of a, uh, a bit of a jiggle to get it in It fits, this um, hanger normally sits flat against the bottom of the tank with two rubbers anyway, and it still sits there, and there's about an inch of clearance here between the end of the pump and the tank, so we might have to use this sock on it, sort of sideways like that. That should give us the clearance we need. I'm not putting that on yet because they're a weird press fit that feels like it's going to break if you do it too many times. And then we've got the tank here, gasket fuel feed and connections. So once we've got that all um, soldered up, we'll fit it in the tank. I'm probably not gonna test it until I actually put fuel in to run the bike though, because um, I don't wanna be dealing with a fuel tank full of petrol sloshing about and making vapors in the garage. But yeah, I thought there was something a lot about that. Glad I checked. Um, hopefully this solution does us because some of the other ones I've seen online involve trying to hide a sort of a race car style fuel pressure regulator somewhere else around the bike and this thing's crowded enough already uh, without that so yeah we'll call it the end of the part there and uh, when we come back again we will take a look at the swing arm i think cheers for watching bye